Ever thought how an EMP blast could bring the world to its knees? Have you ever imagined what life would be like without technology at your fingertips, with nothing but the will to survive? Let's discuss a catastrophe that fascinates preppers like nothing else. The Electromagnetic Pulse, or EMP for short. Picture our world mid-bustle, when a sudden EMP strikes. The city grid collapses, vehicles freeze mid-transit, and we're left to fend for ourselves in an abruptly technologically barren world. An exhilarating, yet terrifying prospect, isn't it? How much of is apocalyptic hyperbole, and how much is a potential reality? While EMPs have secured a place in the dramatic narratives of film and television, their portrayal diverges from the stark truth. Fictional accounts have bred countless misconceptions about these phenomena. As we step back from these dramatic tales, we'll expose real science that lies beneath. Are EMPs the civilization-ending events portrayed on screen, or do we have a fighting chance? For us preppers, understanding the truth behind these myths is crucial for survival. Let's take apart the first myth, and thoroughly investigate if Hollywood got it right. First up, does an EMP really fry all electronics? Now, that's a common myth that needs a good debunking. In reality, whether an electronic device is affected by an EMP depends on a variety of factors. Firstly, the proximity to the source of the EMP plays a significant role. The closer the device is to the EMP source, the more likely it is to be affected. Conversely, a device located further away may escape unscathed. Secondly, the device's shielding also matters. Devices that are well shielded, perhaps within a metal enclosure or a Faraday cage, are less likely to be affected by an EMP. On the other hand, devices that lack such protection are more susceptible to damage. So, while it's true that an EMP could potentially cause widespread damage to electronic devices, it's not a blanket rule. Each device's fate is determined by a combination of factors, including its proximity to the EMP source and its level of shielding. So, not all electronics would go up in smoke, contrary to popular belief. EMP, a product of human ingenuity, right? Well, not exactly. EMPs or electromagnetic pulses aren't always born from the minds of men. Mother Nature has been in the EMP business far longer than we have. Take lightning, for instance. This awe-inspiring natural phenomenon is a powerful source of electromagnetic energy. When a lightning bolt strikes, it generates a pulse of electromagnetic energy that can interfere with nearby electronics, much like a man-made EMP. And let's not forget our sun, that great fiery ball in the sky. It's constantly sending out a stream of charged particles known as solar wind. Occasionally, the sun throws a tantrum, releasing a colossal burst of solar wind in a solar flare. If this solar flare reaches Earth, it can create an EMP that disrupts our planet's magnetic field, causing electrical disturbances that can reach far and wide. So, while humans have indeed harnessed the power of EMPs, let's remember, nature too has its own EMP generators. An EMP, a blink and you miss it event? Well, not quite. While it's true that the initial pulse of an electromagnetic pulse or EMP is incredibly fast, that doesn't tell the whole story. EMPs actually have three distinct phases, the E1, E2, and E3 phases. The E1 phase is indeed rapid, lasting only a few nanoseconds. But the E2 phase, which follows immediately after, can last up to a full second. That's a thousand million times longer than the E1 phase. Finally, the E3 phase can last anywhere from tens of seconds to several minutes, potentially causing prolonged disruptions to electrical systems. So, while the initial pulse is over in the blink of an eye, the full effects of an EMP can be far more long-lasting. Remember, not everything is as it seems at first glance. EMP effects are not as instant as you might think. Explosions, fires, buildings falling, the aftermath of an EMP? Well, hold your horses. This is a common misconception. Let's set the record straight. EMPs, or electromagnetic pulses, do not cause physical damage. You see, an EMP is a burst of electromagnetic energy. It's invisible and intangible. It doesn't have the power to topple buildings or set trees ablaze. It's not a physical force like a tornado or an earthquake. Instead, it's a wave of energy that can disrupt, damage, or destroy electronic devices and systems. The real danger of an EMP lies in its potential to cripple our technology-dependent society. Imagine a world where your phone, computer, car, and even the electrical grid could suddenly stop working. Now that's a scary thought, but physical structures, they'll stand tall and unbothered. So, next time you hear someone talk about the destructive physical force of an EMP, you can confidently correct them. No, an EMP won't bring your house down. 
an EMP blast and every car on the road comes to a standstill? This is a common myth, but the reality is not so straightforward. After an EMP event, it's not a given that all vehicles will stop running. The effect of an EMP on a vehicle depends on several factors. The strength of the EMP, the proximity of the blast, and the direction of the EMP can all play a role. Additionally, the design and age of the vehicle are crucial. Older vehicles, especially those built before the mid-1980s are less reliant on sensitive electronics and are more likely to withstand an EMP. Newer vehicles with their dependence on computer systems are potentially more vulnerable. However, even they aren't guaranteed to stop running. While it is true that an EMP could cause some vehicles to cease functioning, it's not a universal rule, so you might still have a ride after an EMP strike. EMP, a silent, invisible killer? Now that's a chilling thought, isn't it? But let's get the facts straight. EMPs, or electromagnetic pulses, are not directly harmful to biological systems. That's right, they are not lethal to humans. The human body, in its fantastic complexity, is essentially a biological, not an electrical system. While we do have electrical activity within us, it is not the same as the electronic circuitry in your laptop or smartphone. So the kind of electric current that an EMP generates won't fry your internal systems like it might an electronic device. Even if you were right next to a source of a powerful EMP, you wouldn't feel a thing. It's like a radio wave passing through you. You don't feel those, do you? So rest easy knowing that while an EMP might mess with your electronics, it won't mess with you. No, an EMP won't be the death of you. Anyone with a bit of technical know-how can whip up an EMP, right? Well, not quite. There's a common misconception that creating an EMP or electromagnetic pulse is as simple as following a recipe from a DIY manual. But the reality is much more complex. Creating a significant EMP event requires a high level of technical expertise and some hefty resources. It's not as simple as cobbling together a few household items. You'd need a source of high-intensity electromagnetic energy for starters. This could be a nuclear explosion or a specially designed non-nuclear device. Then you'd need the know-how to harness and direct that energy in a way that creates an electromagnetic pulse. This involves understanding the principles of electromagnetism and how to manipulate them. So, while it's theoretically possible to create an EMP on a small scale, the idea that just anyone can do it is certainly a myth. Creating a large-scale EMP isn't a walk in the park. E An EMP the ultimate unstoppable weapon? Let's put the brakes on that thought right there. It's true, an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, can cause significant disruption. But it's far from being an invincible force of nature. Let's talk countermeasures. The most common form of protection against EMPs is a Faraday cage. This is essentially a sealed enclosure formed by conducting material that prevents the entry or escape of an electromagnetic field. Think of it like a fortress for your electronics, but that's not all. Hardening, the process of making structures and systems resistant to EMP effects, is another effective strategy. This includes designing equipment to withstand the rapid energy transfer caused by an EMP or creating redundant systems to take over if primary systems fail. There are also talks of developing advanced technologies that can detect and neutralize EMPs before they cause harm. These are still in the early stages, but progress is being made. EMP unstoppable? Not quite. An EMP, the end of the world as we know it? Well, let's discuss that. The notion that an electromagnetic pulse or EMP would spell the end of civilization is a popular one, often propagated by apocalyptic movies and literature. But is it really the case? The truth is, while an EMP would certainly cause significant disruption and damage, it wouldn't necessarily mean the end of civilization. Yes, there would be difficulties, power outages, electronic failures, and disruptions to communication and transport systems. But these are challenges that can be overcome. Human beings are incredibly adaptable and resilient. We've recovered from countless disasters throughout history, and an EMP event would be no different. We would rebuild, repair, and adapt. Life would definitely be different post-EMP, but different doesn't mean extinct. Furthermore, many nations are already preparing for such a scenario, developing protective measures and recovery plans to help mitigate the impact of an EMP. So, an EMP strike doesn't mean it's game over for civilization. Quite the contrary, it could be a new beginning.